All right, joining me now on Inside TBT, Jason Thompson, NBA veteran who will be a player slash coach with the Broad Street Birds Temple alumni team this summer. Jason, welcome to the show. What's going on, man? Uh, appreciate you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to talk, you know, a little TBT, a little NBA, a little Jason Thompson. But before that, you know, we were talking about it briefly before the show started. But can you just give a quick rundown of why you're part of this team specifically? Yeah, I just have a long uh, um, time, uh, you know, relationship with the uh, with the coach, uh, Tony Paris. I'm a guy that kind of took me under his wing, you know, since I was about 10 years old. And, and he just seen, um, you know, a talent in me, um, you know, from day one. And, you know, like I said, he was the type of guy where, um, you know, he's from New York. So he would be like, yo, you're doing your thing out here in South Jersey. Come to New York. Come to Philly. Come hoop. And I, I was the ultimate hooper, man. I would just, like, I, like when I was young, I would be done my homework. And then I was out. Like, let's go hoop. And, um, you know, and like I said, like, this, let's get it in uh, at all times. So, like I said, a guy that um, I really respect and, um, you know, still kept in contact and helped me out a lot. And he's still doing workouts and stuff in the area as well. That's great. That's great to hear. So. What happens in TBT is guys who play, coach, whatever, for alumni teams, they become legends for that school if they make an impact. So you know that you have a chance to become a Temple legend <laughs> this summer. What do you think of that? Well, I mean, it's I'm not sure how guys will think of that just because of the uh, – out of all the Philly schools, I tell everybody that Temple's the only team that we – haven't played. Um, but like I said, man, I have a lot of respect, you know, for the guys, um, alumni wise. And, uh, when I was playing, it was, uh, Frank Dunphy that was the coach. Um, and he, I even seen him as a coach when he was at UPenn. So, uh, you know, they've had a lot of success over the years. Um, and you know, like I said, I live in Philly, um, in my off seasons and, and still now. So, uh, you know, there's always a lot of love uh, when it comes to Philly, Philly teams, just not when, uh, they're playing against Ryder. Makes a ton of sense. So we got you now in TBT. I'm sure you're excited about that. What, what's your background, knowledge? What do you like about TBT? What are you looking forward to? I'll kind of let you take it from there. Yeah, man, uh, I, I really have been intrigued. Of, of One is the consistency of it and um, how impactful it is, you know, for certain guys to even, you know, get looked at. Um, one of my good friends and uh, former teammates was Kyle Fogg, and I know that they had the run that they had, I think, I forget the name of the team. I know you would know. Um, overseas Elite. Yes, Overseas Elite, exactly. Yeah, and I think they won, what, three or four championships in a row? Yeah, yeah. and he was and he was MVP for most of those. So, like I said, we I would, uh, I played with him in China. Um, and like I said, we had a lot of stories just talking about that. And, um, and like I said, he was just telling him, you know, he was telling me how, like, the excitement, that he had. And I, like I said, man, it's just been getting bigger and better each and every year. Um, so it's definitely one thing that, uh, you know, I could definitely respect is the consistency and how much, uh, you know, it's involved now. Last year, I think it was, um, they, you know, they played at the Rucker. So, you know, a lot of uh, history, man. And it's just a lot of respect. Yeah. Um, something that's cool about TBT, the Elam ending, which the NBA all-star game has adopted where basically you play to a score uh, kind of like what a pickup game does, except the score is determined, you know, halfway through the fourth quarter. For you, you've played with a lot of big time players in your career. Who of your teammates do you think would really thrive in an environment like that where it's, hey, you know, we need eight points to win. We're eight points away from the target score. Yeah, well, I played with uh, Mr. Relevant himself that turned into an all star. So I think Isaiah Thomas, uh, you know, big on that, you know, he can get, uh, you know, hot on the court real quick, um, you know, with his ability to score in bunches. And um, and I even had a teammate at Jimmer for dead as well, too, um, who Jimmer has played uh, in TBT. I think he did last year. Um, yeah. So said, uh, we had a lot of guys, a lot of scorers. Uh, I know Tyreek, um, you know, Evans, especially, uh, you know, in his, his days, could, you know, could do it, heat up as well. So, you know, I played with a lot of great players. And um, I just think it's really good, too, because, you know, it makes it the games closer and, and way more intense. You don't have those blowout games, um, you know, and things like that. So I think that it just – and like I said, it makes – it actually makes players smarter um, young and younger too. You know, there's a lot of guys that have a lot of talent 
but what separates them is their, you know, IQ on the court. But I think like with that type of ending, you know, you have to play defense a certain way. You got to play offense a certain way. Um, and, and they may not appreciate it now, but they will um, as their career goes on. I think that's a great, great uh, response. Jimmer, Tyreek Evans, uh, Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah is a guy that we've been trying to get in TBT for a long time. So maybe you can get in his ear and be like, hey, come play, <laughs> come play on the Temple team. For so, for so, yeah, make him come on the East Coast. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you before we really jump into, you know, your time in the NBA. So let's say, let's say 2013, 14, I was a big, you know, NBA 2K player. And I love doing like the fantasy drafts where you draft your own team. Mm. And I would always, you know, draft LeBron, KD, whoever. And then we come around the fourth, fifth round and you are always available in the fantasy draft. And I'm like, boom, I want Jason Thompson. He could play the four. He could play the five, maybe play a little three if we're going big lineup. So you were mm. a go-to pick of mine in fantasy drafts for 2K. Is that – is that one of your biggest accomplishments, being able to play as yourself in a video game? <laughs> oh, man, it was dope. It was crazy because even, you know, I came out, I was in the 2008 draft. Um, so at that time, there was the 2K for college as well, too. Um, so even at Ryder, uh, we still had the 2K for college. And I was playing there, and I was just hyped to be on that. And like I said, then when I get drafted, um to Sacramento and then being on there. And then, and then, like you said, you, you feel obligated. Obviously, you wanted to play uh, with, you know, and then shoot all the time <laughs> and all those type of things too, man. But it's something that you dreamed about. I played 2K. I played NBA Live. Um, you know, they even had a time where it was the um, NBA Jam. Uh, and, you know, they oh, had yeah. four or five players, and then I was on there as well too, man. It's just like I said, it's just a dream uh come true and then like you said it's one of those things where you know I wish that being in that you know organization you know we had a stable coaches um you know for those years and I had so many different coaches and all those type of things to, to be able to get you know double doubles on a consistent basis and now I'm since I'm retired so now I kind of uh do fantasy basketball more now so now I can kind of appreciate it uh, <laughs> a little bit more Absolutely. So you, you mentioned a bunch of coaches. Unfortunately, you did have a lot of coaches, but who, who are some of the coaches that really made an impact on you? And it can be assistant coaches in addition to head coaches. And well, well, let's I mean, go, let's go NBA coaches with this. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, uh, without even, you know, taking a guess, I had coach Mike Malone, uh, you know, so him winning the championship with the Nuggets, I was happy to see that for him. Um, all the emotion, um, and like I said, an organization that um, that stuck with him, even I think that, you know, they had a good year, I think his first year, and then they didn't make the playoffs and they stuck with him. Um, and, and like I said, then, you know, he, he's able to, uh, you know, win the championship and things like that. So I had him, um, you know, I had uh, Paul Westfall, you know, rest in peace to him. And, and like I said, a Hall of Fame a coach, Hall of Fame player. Um and, you know, him for him, the, the things that he's did uh, when he was with the Suns and getting to the finals. And like you said, unfortunately, you know, he had to play against that bad man and that historical team uh, in the Bulls. Um, and like I said, I also had George Carr, you know, another top Hall of Fame coach as well. And it's crazy to say that, like, in the seven seasons with this organization, I had seven different coaches, uh, which is a whole trivia question whenever they come out with NBA trivia. That's got to be on there for sure. Seven seasons, seven coaches. Yeah, that's crazy. So you seven seasons, like you mentioned, you're you have the most games played in Kings history. Let's get your top five teammates over that time. Wow. Okay. Or or you could build a starting lineup with yourself in there and pick four other teammates. Right. Um. There we go. All right. So. I'll go, like I said, I mean, it's personalities and all that type of stuff. And like I said, for me being that, that long, it's a lot of teammates. Um, but I would go, you know, Dante Green, uh, one, one of my guys. Um, I'll go Isaiah Thomas. I'll go Francisco Garcia. Uh, I'll go Brad Miller, Bobby Jackson, you know, Spencer Halls. I mean, I got a lot, a lot of good guys, man, a lot of good guys. Um, you know, Rudy Gay. 
Derek Williams. I mean, the list goes on of the relationships that I had with these, you know, with these guys um, and stuff like that. Like I said, it's just unfortunate, uh, you know, for us to go through those type of situations. Who on the team right now do you think has the best chance to break your your record for appearances? I think I think I think when uh, you know all the news came out of me going to the game and all those type of things, um, I think they said De'Aaron Fox. Um, which I'm not sure the amount of games, but like I said, like the type of player he is and uh, face of the franchise, um, he'll deserve it, you know, whenever that time comes. But uh, but like I said, I don't mind uh, having that uh, for now. <laughs> Do you, you overlapped with Boogie for a little while, right? I did. So you have a good Boogie story because someone that's very vocal on Twitter about Boogie is, is George Carl which is right. is funny it's funny to see but do you have any notable boogie stories not sure uh any of them are that good uh, to, to to say um but i i would just say that i remember having my first 20 point and 20 rebound game uh, i guess the clippers this is the clippers with like doc rivers coaching and um blake griffin and deandre jordan and um you know, and like I said, like, obviously, you know, when you have a guy like that as an all-star, um, you know, when he's not playing, which he wasn't, you know, it's more space, more touches. So, you know, anytime he was out, I would take my opportunity, um, you know, to, uh, you know, put numbers up and, and, and like I said, do what I do, what I do you know, so you can uh, be successful in fantasy. Um, <laughs> but uh, But then with that being said, so I got, you know, I think it was 23 points, 22 rebounds or something like that. And then, you know, everyone was, you know, cheering me on and all this type of stuff. And the next thing you know, he goes and says, yo, don't get used to that. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> don't get used to that. I'm coming back next game. And the next game he goes and he has a 2020 game as well, too. So, oh, man. That's so funny. Kind of took the shine a little bit. But uh, that's how he was, man. Competitive dude. Um, talented. But uh, but like I said, I mean, a uh, little wild as well, too. Makes sense. You you obviously played against – I just got a few more questions for you. You played against oh. a ton, a ton, a ton of players. Kobe, LeBron, prime Dwight Howard. Who Was there anyone that you were like, God damn it, I can't believe we have to play this guy again tonight? Like anyone that just <laughs> killed you guys you know, every time? I mean, it's a great question, man, because like I said, especially in the West back then, and, I, and even in the division, you know, we had DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin. We had Dirk Levinsky. Um, then we had LaMarcus Aldridge and Greg Oden went healthy. Um, you know, and the list goes on. I, my thing is, it's like, you know, it, you had Dirk, especially he was very, very unique at the time. Now it's like everyone is kind of similar to him. Um, but, you know, with him, you had to put a hand in his face to even alter his shot because you were never going to block it. Some people that fade, you can block his shot. With him at his size, you know, at seven one, seven two, And then, like you said, especially during that championship run season, um, you know, when you have that type of respect in the league, you're going to get a lot of calls and, and things like that too. So even when you're supposed to body these guys up, you know, you're going to get like some quick fouls and, and get to the line, um, you know. So I would always say Dirk, I say, especially during the era when I got into the league in 2008, um, it was all mid-range. And like that was my game as well, too, even though I could shoot threes. Uh, so I would say LaMarcus Aldridge, too, where if there was no weak side, I mean, they were doing the pocket passes um, in mid-range. And I mean, like I said, it, you know, it's automatic. It just keep running down court, knowing that it would take the ball out of bounds, no one was going to go in. Uh, and I just know that after every, before every Clipper game, Especially when Blake was dunking on Kendrick Perkins and my, uh, Timothy Mozgov and uh, Brandon um, Brandon Knight. And like I said, no offense, to, but like these are monumental dunk ons. All I would say is, is I cannot get dunk on that is going to be on ESPN or YouTube forever and ever. So. I used to talk to them guys before the games, like, yo, man, you got to chill out. You know, like, <laughs> let's go at each other, but no, nothing crazy. So, like I said, it was all, it's all respect. Um, and like I said, especially in the Western Conference, then, just pick your poison on, on who you're going up against. 
I love that. Last two questions because it's kind of a one question, two parter. <clears throat> Fav- favorite city to play in on the road, least favorite city to play in on the road. Oh, man. All right. So, <laughs> I mean, look, I don't want the fans going crazy on this answer because, like I said, I used to do a top five best and top five worst. Um, definitely the worst was this Oklahoma City, man. And, like I said, like, no, no offense. To, the, to them, they, they, they have some of the best fans in the NBA um, as well. But at the time, it was KD, Russ, Hard, like, you know, the, Ibaka, Harden, all those guys. So literally, they like the hotel we were at was haunted. Guys didn't even really want to stay in the hotel. That was one. Then number two, really the only restaurant that people went to was KD's. So KD had a restaurant, I think it was like a soul food type spot. I'm not sure if it's there anymore. That was the only spot that really to go to. And then they had like a movie theater that was right there in the center. Which anytime the fans knew what team they playing against, they were going to be in that center the night before, for sure, knowing that the team was going to be there. You know what I mean? Because there's nowhere to go. Um, so uh, I would say Oklahoma City. Uh, and then the best... It's tough. Um, I would say, like, for weather and stuff wise, you know, it would it's a toss up between LA and Miami. Um, but then playing in the arena, it would be Madison Square Garden. All um, right. And then I gave two answers for that. Then I would say Madison Square Garden, and I would say now it's called Wells Fargo Center. Madison Square Garden, just because of that energy, man, and um, you know, obviously, it's the world's famous arena in the world. And then Philly, it was just because of just, you know, all my family and friends, high school, college, and all of them came to the games. And sometimes it would be louder, especially during those times. My fan, people, fans would be louder than the actual arena at the time. So it was a lot of love. All right. Follow up. Most dangerous city in terms of, oh, man, we're, we're going to get into some trouble tonight. Oh, you mean like good dangerous? Good dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I said, I guess you got to – honestly, I would think it's actually two answers I gave already. I would say Miami and New York because those are the ones that just stay up openly. What uh, about Atlanta? Atlanta, but like I said, it kind of – yeah, it just depends. That could be one. But I, but then I would say one that was is low-key, I would say Scottsdale which would be Phoenix, Arizona. Scottsdale is very, very, very underrated. So I would All say, right. yeah, I would say Miami, New York, and then Scottsdale. All right, last question. I lied. I have one more. It's all good, man. Before I get coming. you out of here. Coming. We got to get the headlines. We got to get the clickbait. Who's the GOAT? Who's the greatest of all time? Oh, man. I, you know, and like I said, I respect all three of these guys, man. Honestly, I, I mean, to me, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. But I feel like it just depends on when people were born. You know what I mean? Because like I said, I waking up watching NBA on NBC, hearing Marv Albert and Bill Walton, and they say, you know, the most feared man in the world was Michael Jordan, man. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, that's all you saw. Like Mike, I want to be like Mike, right? And then the closest thing to that was Kobe Bryant. And I feel like it's a shame that Kobe's getting more respect when he's pat because, but like I said, he was a killer on the court, man. Like he was, he was dead. And like I said, I think he's the closest to Mike. And then, like you said, you have LeBron as well too, because of what he's doing. So I, look, my goal, I would say Michael Jordan, but like I said, like it's Kobe, LeBron are, are right there as well too. All right. That's a fantastic answer. Jason Thompson, you're the man. I would keep going, except I'm going to be in Wichita, which is where you guys are going to be. So we're going to hang out in person and do round two of this interview in person. Sounds good, man. Appreciate you for having me. All right. Thanks for coming on. Jason Thompson will be a part of the Broad Street Birds this summer in TBT, the Temple alumni team. Don't ask him why he's a part of the Temple alumni team, (laughs) but he's on his way to becoming a Temple legend. Man, I'm anxious in the real world. It's time for me to say this. The basics, the talent in my mind, I can't.
can't waste it. My life is too safe. It's my time for it's taking. I'm baking my mind every day. It's the same ish. Lazy, my grind needs to get a new facelift. Coming from the underground and busting through the pavement. Right with it. And lean with it. My team win it. My team win it. Now right with it. And lean with it. My team turn up. When I spit it. Now right with it. And lean with it. My team win it. My team win it. Now right with it. And lean with it. My team turn up. When I spit it. Don't think that I'm playing because I'm saving the game. And I said that I will be more because oh yeah, that is so raving. Racing and pacing around. Go ahead and spit some bars, but you're probably just gonna mumble. A lot of rappers these days really need to get them humble. Cause they think they at the top, they better stop before they stumble. Cause I'm swiping all their biddies while they swiping right on mumble. And your girl, he calls me daddy, but she only calls you uncle. But no, we not related, homie. No, we not some fam. You never get in clubs, you can't even.